Hey, good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel. Well, today I wanted to do a, a real quick comparison on the uh, EP Ever charge controller versus the Victron charge controller and what I've learned using both. Now, if you've been watching this channel, uh, you know for a long time uh, I've had trouble programming uh, the EP Ever for the lithium batteries. And I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what I've been uh, dealing with on that. So you can see right here, right now, low light conditions, three and a half amps, roughly 3.2 coming in, battery bank at 13.5. And what we've got this set now uh, for its boost charge is up to 14.3, or I should say down to 14.3. Uh, I tried using the preset uh, lithium setting at 14.5 in these. Uh, this charge controller was not quick enough. Uh, when I would get a burst of sunshine, it would give me alarms on the controller and on the inverter. And one of the other things that I've noticed is this tends to read the, the uh, battery voltage uh, higher uh, than it really is. Of course, it's under a charge condition, so you can't tell exactly. But anyway, right there it says 13.5. And if I come down to the inverter, it's reading it at 13.3 and 123 volts. And <clears throat> this is a more accurate read, actually, than that particular charge controller. And then if I come down here, uh, to this uh, battery monitor 13.43 so uh, under these low light conditions there's not a lot of discrepancy but what I have found <clears throat> is that uh, and also you really need an MT50 to program this uh, particular charge controller effectively but I have had to continuously uh, kind of uh, tweak these settings along the way. Now I've got my boost setting for 14.3 uh, for 120 minutes. So far I've not triggered any alarms even when the sun comes out and gives my panels a, a quick burst of sunshine when it's trying to finish off a charge. It hasn't set the alarms off. We're at 14.4 and 14.5 it kept setting the alarms off. It just wasn't quick enough to uh, catch that burst of sunshine. And then by comparison, I've been uh, charging up batteries with this uh, Victron uh, 7515. It's of course a smaller uh, charge controller. But I've been watching it for the past few days. Right here, we just finished off uh, charging this Ampere Time 100 amp hour uh, lithium battery. And I'll show you on the app that the Victron uses. There's exactly zero watts coming in right now. It's coming down, it's down to 13.91 volts, not even letting anything in uh, because it has gone to. Uh, float mode now, which is 13.5 on this Victron and It's not going to allow anything in until it dips below 13.5 so it just finished off a top charge And for that ampere time we've and the other batteries we've been looking at and testing We've just been using a couple of 100 watt solar panels Still pretty low light conditions out here. Uh, so they're trying. So uh, of course the Victron is more expensive than the EP ever. Uh, this one here for the 15 amps is a little over a hundred dollars. <clears throat> and if I wanted to have one comparable to that 40 amp EP ever, they make a 100 uh, volt 50 amp charger. 
for about three and a quarter, whereas the EP Ever with the MT50 comes in at about uh, 165, I believe. So uh, Victron basically charges twice as much. And the, the EP Ever has worked well, but I have spent an inordinate amount of time uh, keeping this thing programmed correctly and finding exactly what works. Now, I've, like I've said, I've had to drop this down uh, to 14.3 for its boost charge. Uh, so far, so good, no alarms. Uh, the Victron is preset for 14.2 uh, as its uh, absorption charge and then 13.5 float. So that's the thing that I am so impressed with the Victron is regardless of how the sun is coming and going on your panels, uh, I don't know exactly what it is in there. The chip, I'm assuming, some kind of a processor is so fast that uh, it never allows, so far in my usage, it never allows it even on when it's finishing up the charge and dropping the, the watts coming in off the panel to just a trickle to hold it up there. Uh, this thing has never given any kind of a surge. I watch it on that phone amp, that phone app constantly and it just moves so quick. It's amazing, never lets it go above what it's set for. The fact that this is just a plug-and-play, program it to the lithium iron phosphate setting, and you're done. Uh, that's hard to beat, in my opinion. Like I said, I've spent so many hours uh, messing around the parameters of that EP ever. And although it works well, uh, you know, if you can afford it, I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, this thing is superior and maybe someday I'll get some larger ones to go back there on the main house. But right now we're getting ready to tie this up into a small little uh, system of its own. And once it's all done, uh, I'm not ever going to have to look at it. Uh, and that's what I do like about this. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Since I've talked so much about uh, the EP Evers in the past, I'm quickly becoming a Victron guy. Aloha. Friday, everybody. Have a good weekend.